Hi everyone, Mike here. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about how I'm using a Stream Deck to control my task manager things. First, for those who might not be familiar, a Stream Deck is a control pad with programmable buttons. As the name suggests, it's marketed to streamers, but it's incredibly useful for productivity tasks too. Things has great keyboard shortcut support, but I find the Stream Deck easier to use. Personally, I'm faster at updating things with one hand on the mouse and another hand on the Stream Deck. Don't get me wrong, I am a big fan of keyboard shortcuts and generally find them to be the best way to interact with the frequently used parts of a program. But let me show you how I'm using my Stream Deck to do everything from invoking those built-in keyboard shortcuts to running custom Apple scripts via Keyboard Maestro. And perhaps you'll see why I'm loving this setup. The easiest way to start using your Stream Deck with things is by using that awesome keyboard shortcut support I was talking about earlier. If I wanna move the when date of an action item forward by one day, I could use the option and right bracket keys which make up the native keyboard shortcut in things, or I could just press this tomorrow button on my Stream Deck. Similarly, I can mark an action item complete by using Command and K, or canceled by using Option Command K. But instead, I use these two buttons on the Stream Deck. All three of these functions just use the system hotkey feature of Stream Deck to press the existing things keyboard shortcuts for me. Arguably, this is a lateral move. And if you do a lot of work in things on an iPad with an attached keyboard, this is probably even a step back. That is, until I started using Keyboard Maestro to do more advanced changes in things. Once that happened, the Stream Deck really became the solution for me. I ran into the limitations of things keyboard shortcuts once I wanted to move an action item to a specific area. You can use Shift Command M to bring up a move window, but then you have to type in the destination. This stretches the capability of the Stream Deck's built-in tools, so I looked to Keyboard Maestro for a solution. I tried a UI-based macro for a little while, but found it clunky, so I looked to ChatGPT to write an Apple script for me to do exactly what I want, and I've been loving the results. A whole new world of options opened up, so let me share a few of them with you. A lot of times, I'll have a work-related action item that I don't want to work on until Monday. I could keep tapping the Tomorrow button we talked about before until I get to Monday, but instead, I can tap this Monday button, which will calculate the date for the next Monday after today and assign that date to the action item. I also have one for Saturday in case there's a personal item I wanna take care of on the weekend. In addition to organizing things by time, I also have five different areas and things for the five different areas of my life. Each of those areas has a button on my stream deck that runs an Apple script that will move the action item to the correct area and add that area's tag as well. This is super helpful for when I'm processing my inbox. As part of my clear to neutral process that I do at the end of every workday, I like to pick out a tough but important task that I want to work on tomorrow. I call these tasks frogs. Check the link in the description for why. When I pick out this task, I have a Stream Deck button and an Apple script that will give that task a when date of tomorrow, assign it a tag of frog, and put a frog emoji at the beginning of the action item to make it easy for me to see it in the list tomorrow. It's because of these Apple script driven automations that I've decided to move all of my things interactions to my stream deck. Instead of switching back and forth from using the keyboard for simple modifications and then using the stream deck for the more complex stuff, I just went all in on the stream deck and find it to be a lot simpler. Since my workflow is centered around my Mac mini these days, I haven't experienced any trade-offs with this setup. And as a result, I've been having a greatly reduced friction maintaining things. So I shared all about how these automations are created, but let me take a moment to show you how I use them. I have the 15 button stream deck. I'm contemplating getting the bigger one, but we'll see. Because I use the smaller one, I have two pages in my things profile. I have a working mode and a reviewing mode. 
You can see that a lot of buttons repeat on each screen, and I keep them in the same place so I don't get confused. But I find this two-page setup to be pretty useful for me. I spend all day in the working mode and then switch to the reviewing mode when I'm doing my daily clear to neutral process or a weekly review. So if you're like me and have the smaller stream deck, consider how pages might help you maximize the buttons that you have. If you want a copy of the Apple scripts that I showed or want to learn about that clear to neutral process I mentioned throughout the video, there is a companion post on my blog that you can visit to get all of that information. Check the description for the link. I hope this video helped you. If it did, please consider liking, sharing, or subscribing. There will always be more content like this coming. By the way, if you're interested in the other ways that I'm augmenting things, check out this video about how I use drafts for project templates. There's also this video over here that the algorithm thinks you'll like too. Maybe that one's more your speed.